What is up guys, Richard Cackington here. Thank you so much for stopping by and today we are going to be discussing the latest kerfuffle within the Destiny 2 community. Now this all arose with the unveiling of the next season, Season of Dawn. Mainly it involves around the PvP community and they're feeling like there simply isn't enough content, there isn't enough attention that Bungie is putting on PvP, especially with Season of Dawn. And we're also going to be discussing Bungie's official response to their criticism. And so, let's get started. Now, first things first, what exactly happened? Why is the PvP community, for the most part, disappointed with Season of Dawn? Well, it all started from the first unveiling. The way that Bungie has kind of introduced us to Season of Dawn was over a course of a few days. The first day, we had the website updated and it showed the baseline points, the main pillars of this new season and of course there was a trailer as well and that kind of showed us all right Osiris is back this takes place at least for the most part on Mercury and that assisted by some clickbait definitely got people very hyped up for the possibility that Trials of Osiris was returning this, for those who don't know, was the pinnacle PvP activity introduced back in the House of Wolves expansion for Destiny 1, and it was a mainstay in Destiny 1 ever since. It was the raid of PvP, in a sense. It was the thing that players got super excited for, it was available to play every weekend, and players absolutely loved slash hated it, as with everything in PvP, but it got the community's attention and there's definitely more love for that mode than hate. And of course, the possibility of it being brought back in Season of Dawn was very, very tantalizing. Unfortunately, only really a day later with the live stream and absolutely zero mention of it, players got pretty disappointed pretty fast. The thing is, Bungie never officially even hinted that Trials was returning with Season of Dawn. That was, in some respects, a self-inflicted wound. In fact, when we go back to a February This Week at Bungie update, which is really kind of the last time that Bungie really addressed Trials, we can see right here that Bungie says Trials is staying on hiatus indefinitely and will not return over the course of the next few seasons. When we have those plans ready, we'll be sure to share them with you. And I think that last part, we'll be sure to share them with you, is very important. Trials is such a big deal that there's no way Bungie wouldn't have some massive hints and mentions of it. Like, it should be super obvious to everyone when and if Trials is returning. With that being said, again, there was a lot of people pressuring Bungie to bring this mode back, and community manager DMG did reply about it, saying, For Trials, we've had a few blog posts talking about Trials of the Nine being on indefinite hiatus, and Luke speaking to what worked and what didn't in one of the director's cut blog articles. This season, Elimination is returning as a static mode that you can play at any time. We collected a lot of feedback from Crucible Labs over the last season, and we'll continue to look at how the mode plays this season with upcoming Sandbox changes and other things. You bet your ass I'll be there. Please continue to sound off with what works and what doesn't. Maps, mode settings, weapons, armor, etc. So, that is a very interesting response and here's what we can take from that. Firstly, the fact that the word 9 is italicized is absolutely no accident. I think what Bungie is saying is that Trials of the Nine will never return. We're not going to be killing each other for the will of the Nine. We will, however, be killing each other for the will of Osiris. I would bet my bottom dollar that a different version of Trials is returning, likely Trials of Osiris. Heck, Osiris is back, and although it may not be this season, 
if every season continues from one season to the next and flows into one another, the fact that we killed the Undying Mind in Season of the Undying ripped the timeline apart, and that is why Osiris is back and we're going to rescue Saint-14 this season. So if Osiris is back and after we rescue Saint-14, maybe next season Osiris will say, well, since I'm back, I'm going to re-implement Trials of Osiris. So I think that is a definite possibility, but... Again, it's important to not hype yourself up with absolutely no evidence. With all of that being said, it's kind of missing the mark in the sense that players were very excited about the prospect of Trials and very disappointed by the fact that it's not here because they feel like PvP just doesn't get enough attention. And especially this is due to the fact that during one of those Director's Cut articles, Luke Smith said that this year, there's going to be a renewed focus on PvP, and many players feel like there just wasn't. With Shadow Keep, there really wasn't anything new, anything substantial added. Yeah, the playlist changed around, we got like one new map, but that's about it. There was the introduction of the seasonal artifacts and stuff like that, which made a big difference, but that is seen more of a generality throughout the game rather than a focus on PvP specifically. However, Bungie did address this concern as well, saying, DMG again, Hi all, at Shadowkeep launch, we refreshed the Crucible nodes, added a solo playlist for comp, refactored glory gains, and started curating Crucible maps to pull ones that weren't performing well out of rotation for some love. This was the beginning of our work on Crucible over the next year, and we're far from done. In Season of Dawn, we'll be reintroducing Rusted Lands, bringing Elimination to a static playlist node available at all times, and doing a bit of sandbox work to refresh how Crucible gameplay feels. A few weeks back, we previewed the changes for One-Eyed Mask and Recluse, which may shift the sandbox around a bit. On top of that, we have a slew of new legendary weapons, exotic armor pieces, and subclass changes, which we hope will push players to new builds. We'll also have a few maps returning to rotation with fixes to spawns and other issues. With a selection of maps being removed, we'll have some details on that in the twelve layer this afternoon, which was unveiled in my previous video, I went over it. As for masterwork materials, because there's a complaint there's not enough from PvP, we're passing this feedback along to the team. The current state of mats, as stated in the original post, is after a full vendor refresh. This isn't comparable to other parts of the game. Gambit shares this issue to an extent, but there are fully masterworked weapons that drop from time to time and end up gaining more mats than Crucible. We have been introducing new pursuit weapons for players to earn via glory, but we hear you on the legend rewards and have been passing this feedback along as well. I understand the feedback right now in that things feel slow. We have a three month seasonal rotations with a few additional updates with each season, which players find to be too long for upkeep and refreshes. While we're passing this feedback along to the team, we also have to be sure to balance our resource allocation internally and not rush fixes or changes which may break the experience. This isn't meant to downplay your feedback in any sense, just wanted to say that game development takes time and that we don't want to rush things that could end up creating more issues in the wild. As we have more information on future changes for the Crucible, we'll let you know. Until then, we have people working on the Crucible internally, whether it be tweaks to modes, matchmaking, sandbox, or other. Please keep the feedback coming. And I want to read that in its entirety because I don't want anything taken out of context, but I mean, it's an interesting response. On the one hand, I feel like there's a little bit of defending going on, defending the fact that, hey, we have done some stuff to PvP for those saying that we've done absolutely nothing that's not true, and obviously they list a lot of the changes. And then there's a sense of, hey, we hear you, and we're hopefully going to do better in the future. But that doesn't really do anything right now, does it? And this is an unfortunate response in the sense that we already identified this problem. Bungie already identified this problem with Luke Smith saying we're going to have to focus more on PvP. And then two seasons after saying that, there's still much to be desired.
One of the interesting things that is mentioned in this response is that PvP is getting a jolt of electricity in a sense with that seasonal artifact rotation, with the rotation of the seasonal mods, which in Season of Dawn are much more interesting. You're gonna have mods that charge you with light and then mods that remove those charges of light to do extra things, whether that's more damage, damage resistance, etc. So that could create very different builds in PvP than we have right now. Also, it's funny that I've actually seen people call for Bungie to nerf stuff like Wormhusk Hunters and handheld supernovas. Maybe that is the right play, but the thing is, with the rotation of the seasonal artifact, handheld supernova relies a lot on the oppressive darkness mod. The bottom tree striker seems ridiculous, partially because of Thundercoil. Also, double arc battery Wormhusk Hunter feels a little oppressive. The thing is, one of the key components, the seasonal mod of all three of those builds is being removed. So those builds will naturally get worse. Now, are they gonna get worse enough to where they're balanced? That's the key question. But it is interesting that just by changing the seasonal artifact, we're already shaking up the meta quite a bit. I think again mentioned in this response, the updates to the solar subclasses are huge as well. You're gonna see a lot more burning hammers than you are striker titans for this season. But the thing is, and I think the reason why the concern from the PvP community continues despite these changes is that, yes, those are great changes that will alter the way you play, but why play at all if there's nothing to play for? What are you working towards? When the removal of Trials of the Nine happened, there was nothing to replace it. They kind of introduced a willy-nilly comp mode, but it's not flushed out and good enough in a lot of players' eyes. There needs to be that pinnacle chase. There needs to be a reason to play with all these new builds and stuff. And if the Crucible loot table doesn't even reset, and there's just one pinnacle, or I should say ritual weapon for PvP, once players get that, you know, they've checked it off their list, they're done. There absolutely needs to be something to work towards, and I think it's understandable that when players look at this calendar and see basically nothing happening for PvP aside from, you know, a new Iron Banner, that they would get upset. We get all of these random activities, why can't there be a PvP-focused activity? A sundial kind of activity, but in PvP. It's not necessarily going to be as insane as Trials if and when that does return, but just something to tie the PvP community over. With all of that being said, the interesting thing is that if you are a PvP player and you do feel disenfranchised right now, just don't buy Season of Dawn because for the first time in a long time, you can do that. You can just not buy this season, take a break, go play other games, and then come back in and buy the next season that does cater to PvP potentially a la carte. Because previously, for the other seasons, you had to buy the annual pass, and it was a pay up front thing, you had to buy all three seasons, and I think that's a lot worse than the model we have right now, where you can much more readily pick and choose what seasons you want to participate in. And I really do think you won't have too long to wait. I predict Trials coming back sometime in 2020 because they are pushing 3v3 elimination like crazy. It was in Crucible Labs, now it's a dedicated mode. They're constantly asking for feedback, and this is not by accident. They're clearly getting ready to introduce something involving 3v3 elimination, and my guess would be Trials. However, with all that being said, at the end of the video, I want to leave you guys with a very interesting subject of discussion. A lot of people are asking for more from Bungie, but this may be all that they can give. Bungie is independent now. They don't have the same resources that they did when Activision was backing them. Heck, they had two additional studios, High Moon Studios and Vicarious Visions, helping them make Destiny content. They lost all those resources. It's just Bungie now making content. And we were all so happy for them to become independent and to do things like enabling cross-save and being much more open to potentially enabling cross-play 
and stuff in the future. That's all fantastic. And not to mention the fact that the game is free to play now. That may have never happened with Activision behind them. But this is the reality of this new situation. If we're happy for them to be independent, we can't expect them to pump out the same amount of content that they were when they had much more resources. This is the new reality. And, you know, it begs the question, was becoming independent the right move? I still think overall, yes, but you can't be happy for one and then upset for the other. You have to either accept the new reality or want to change. But in that new reality, I think there could be better allocation of resources. Maybe less time spent making Eververse Sparrows, more time making new weapons to put into the Evergreen playlists like Crucible, Strikes, etc. to bump those activities up. But that is it for the video. Wanted to talk about all of that. I hope you guys enjoyed, found this interesting. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.